Hi, this is Cesarka from Magpie Gemstones. Uh, one of the questions that I'm often asked is what tools do I need um, to begin to do wire wrap? And to begin to do wire wrap, you really need very few tools. What you need um, is a pair of needle nose pliers. Uh, needle nose are pointed at the end so that you can get close into your work. Um, but they flare out at the, at the back so that you have a wide surface area that you can use to hold onto wire. These, a pair of cutters, preferably flush cutters, uh, but they don't need to be. But you need a pair of cutters that, that can get in close and, and give you a good snip. Um, and a pair of round nose pliers. And the round nose allow you to make the links um, that are a pretty basic design um, element in wire wrap jewelry. So you have the three. You have the round nose, the needle nose, and then the flush cutters. My recommendation is to get a really good set of flush cutters. Um, the flush cutters that you want to have are going to be a fairly good quality and they will flush cut the wire. That's why they're called flush cutters. Um, it creates a flush cut so that you don't have to do a lot of sanding. You don't end up with a sharp surface. It, it cuts down on the amount of work that you do and it really makes life much easier. So if you do have a really good pair of flush cutters, be sure, let me find them, you purchase a set of pretty good cutters um, that you can use on base metal chain, that you can use on a beading wire that's made out of steel, um, and that you can use to really chew up some heavy wires because you don't want to ruin these. You want them to create a flush cut um, forever. So now we're up to four tools that are the basic necessity for wire wrapping. After that, uh, what's nice to get is a pair of um, flat nose. The flat nose pliers, they're wider at the end and they're really nice for when you're working with a couple of sets of wires um, at the same time. You're manipulating a few sets. Or if you have a long row of something that needs to be flattened, um, like in a border wrap. These are, these are really sweet to have. One of the tools that's really important for me is my crimping pliers, believe it or not. The rounded, you can see there, where there's a round hole that doesn't have a dent in it, and then there's one that does. Well, the dented part, of course, is to make the crimp. And the rounded one is to round out the crimp. I use my crimping pliers to round out and pull together wire all the time because it doesn't leave marks. Um, it makes a really nice round end, especially on, let me get an example for you. Um, okay, so I'm wire wrapping um, something and I'm wire wrapping next to a bead. I can take this in, give it a pinch, pinch it together. Whereas my other pliers might not get in there and my other pliers will leave a mark. This will also slip right by the bead so I don't hurt the bead, whereas sometimes pliers can. So I really, really like using this to finish off a wrapped loop. Um, of course, every wire wrapper has all the different kinds of pliers that they really don't need. But they end up being useful um, in certain circumstances. Like, I love my wubbers to shape my ear wires. It's just a little idiosyncrasy. You can have anything to shape your ear wires. You can have knitting needles. You could have tools out of the kitchen. Um, you'll, you'll come across things and you'll find a use for them. They're not a necessity. They're nice to have. These are wonderful. These are not expensive pliers. These are the uh, cheaper Pakistani metal. When you start wire wrapping, you'll be inclined to buy the cheaper pliers, and that, that's understandable. But because they're made of a less strong metal, um, the joints aren't as strong, the box joints aren't as strong, they will tweak, they will twist, they will turn, and then they won't want to hang on to the wire like really good pliers. German steel with strong joints um, will hang on to the wire and, and make life so much better and so much easier for you to manifest what it is you're thinking out past your pliers into the object, which, as we all know with wire wrapping, that's really hard to do anyway. Um, but with these, the, I'm not sure what they call these with the bent nose, bent nose pliers, I think. 
I like to have these around because sometimes I get a wire into a spot and I just can't get it out and this will help me pull it out and then I can move on to my better pliers. Now as for brands of pliers, um, Lindstrom's, I love my Lindstrom's, especially my Ergo Lindstrom's as I get older and my I've done 20 years of wire work, my, my hands, yeah, the, these are wonderful. My hands don't hurt anymore when I do wire up. Revere's are fantastic. They hang onto the wire. You have absolute control. You can feel everything that's going on. Wonderful, but if I'm doing a lot of wire wrapping, they really hurt because there is no padding. Having no padding is a good thing. Um, for feel, bad for my hands. Then there's the Wubbers. Uh, the Wubbers have huge... They're huge. And that's probably why I don't like them, because I have little teeny tiny hands. So I have a hard time hanging on to wire. My hands are slipping all over the place. I don't use them much. Some people just adore them. And um, beyond that, what are the other kinds of pliers? Well, we can move on to hammers. Um, once you get to a certain place, you're going to want hammers. Domed hammer. Nylon. Hammer for hardening. Rawhide mallet for hardening. One of the above. Uh, beyond that, um, there are stepped pliers so that you can make links and jumps that are exactly the same. You make them all right there. And they're all the same size and you know exactly what size they're going to be. These I absolutely adore. These are my um, parallel rubber pliers. I can hold uh, ten sets of wires in parallel, hang on to them. I guess I could have just learned how to use tape instead. That probably would have been cheaper and easier. And that uh, pretty much sums it up. Now when you're looking for pliers, um, when you're looking for the flat pliers, now do you see how at the ends they meet but down here it doesn't? That's something that's important to me. And why is it important to me? Because when I hold on to a couple parallel wires, it they'll hold. There's the same distance from the bottom as there is from the top. Some people like it to be tight all the way down. No, it's what works better for them. I use bigger wire, so that works better for me. So when I look at pliers, I look at the ends. I make sure that they're square up and down. I don't know if you can see that. Let's try it with a pair of rounds. Because if they're... if if they've twisted, are they straight up and down with one another? If they're off a little bit, that means that the box joint isn't very strong. And when you've been turning, they've been twisting. So staying up and down is really important. How close they touch, all the way from the top to the bottom. Some people want them to touch all the way. Some people, like me, only want them to touch at the top. Those are all things to take into um, consideration. And... I really can't think of anything else that you need to begin wire wrapping um, except those four. And then the the four, of course, was the needle nose, the cutters, the round nose, and then another pair of cutters so you don't ruin your good cutters. That's the basics that you need to get started, and the rest is just fun. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and I hope that helps. Take care.